turn up tomorrow in Ireland and declare that I'm home. Welcome back. Because that's exactly what Meghan Markle's done. She's made her entire identity to score some points on the old diversity checklist now about Nigeria. She thanked them for welcoming her home. Now, some genealogists actually suggest that she might be Ghanaian. And the Sussex-loving press are absolutely lapping it up. I think it's extraordinary. And I don't think it's extraordinary at all. Me, me, me no, you, you don't understand African-American culture in that sense, because it's a really big thing for black people in the new world, so people who would have gone to America and the Caribbean as slaves initially, and who are now um, you know, descended from slaves, to find out what their ancestry is, and then go back to that place and feel like they are from somewhere. Because these people, they can't even, they can't track their ancestry back more than a hundred years. They don't even have their own family name. Now, I am of African descent. That is not my experience. It's completely different. But I think for you to say it's outrageous that Megan's gone to Nigeria and she says she's gone home, that is something that a lot of African Americans do and a lot of black Caribbeans do. And would you seriously say to them it's stupid for them to go to Africa and feel like they're at no, home? No, but Megan Markle... Yes, I would say that. Why? You, you just told us every week on week that multiculturalism has been... This is nothing to do with multiculturalism. Well, how, how is it... How <laughs> this is, is not to do with multiculturalism. turn up somewhere and what say, I'm about? home. No, what are you talking about? <laughs> Oh, Darren, it's the same as when American Europeans come back to Europe, Britain, Scotland, like Donald Trump goes to Scotland and says, I'm Scottish, I'm home. It's exactly the no same. One does that. And yet, and yet, and, and yet, and yet, when Donald Trump does that and talks about his link to this country, you say, oh, it's a great no, thing. I criticize but when Joe it's, but Biden. when it's, but when uh, it's, when it's Meghan that? Markle, will you, let me actually you say, say no. Oh, she's being woke. Joe Biden. Diversity. Joe, oh my God. Will you let me speak? Hashtag DNI. Joe Biden turned up in Ireland and declared he was home. And guess what? I criticised him then. He's an elderly white man, so how dare you try and t make out that I'm somehow being some kind of bigot, as you just implied. I didn't. You I didn't. You're trying to imply I didn't. that. As you I said, you're being silly. You're a race baiter. You're Abby being <laughs> silly. <laughs> you're this was a stark illustration of the racial misunderstandings and disparities that pervade media and society. It was at full display. The interaction between the host and, I'm guessing here, the guest, a person of color, was not just uncomfortable to watch, but deeply troubling. The host's response to the guest's attempt to explain the cultural and historical significance of diaspora communities reconnecting with their ancest ancestral lands was dismissive and aggressively defensive. Instead of listening and possibly learning from the guest's insight, the host chose to yell and overpower the conversation, effectively silencing an important perspective. This approach is reminiscent of what has colloquially been called or labeled being a Karen, that sort of behavior, where entitlement and privilege lead to a refusal to acknowledge other people's experiences and rights. This behavior is particularly egregious given the subject matter, racial identity and heritage. For many people of color, especially those descended from individuals forcefully dis dis displaced through slavery, sorry, Connecting with their ancestral homelands is an emotional and deeply personal journey. It is a way of reclaiming what was forcefully taken from their ancestors. It's their history. It's their culture. 
It's their identity. Meghan Markle, expression of feeling at home in Nigeria, should be understood in this context. It isn't merely a casual comment about heritage, but a profound statement about identity and belonging in a world that has often stripped such things away from people of color. By trivializing this, the white host not only displayed a profound ignorance of the complexities of racial identity and heritage, but also perpetuated the kind of racial insensitivity that continues to divide societies. When the host equated his criticism of white public figures claiming European roots with Meghan Markle's comment, that's when he made the reference about Biden, he demonstrated a lack of understanding about the historical and systematic differences White Americans claiming European heritage do not face the same historical context of violence, disruption, and erasure as African Americans or Black Caribbeans looking to reconnect with Africa. This false equivalence is not just inaccurate, it's harmful as it dismisses the unique injustices faced by black people and their profound implications. I myself as a person of color, of different heritages, I found the host on willingness to engage meaningfully with his co-host or, 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 or guest, to listen to his explanation, it was a painful reminder of the broader societal failures to respect and recognize the voices of those historically marginalized. It is crucial for those in positions of influence, like television host or, or program host, to approach discussions of race and identity with empathy, humility, and a willingness to listen, rather than defensively positioning himself as a victim. You're not the victim here. Your views are just being challenged and you don't like it. This incident underscores the need for greater awareness and education about the histories and experiences of diaspora's communities. It also calls for the reevaluation of how media discussions about race are conducted. To ensure that they are inclusive, respectful, and enlightening rather than reductive and silencing. The host knew very well with his privilege, born privilege, how quickly he would be able and was able to silent the other person. Now, I don't know about you. But I have very clear in my mind, when my mother said to me, you are an intelligent boy, but you're going to have to work twice or even more than your white counterparts. And at the time, being a young boy, I didn't get that. 
but oh boy, do I get it today. Because throughout, I've had to put in double the work. How dare he take such an important experience for the Duchess of Sussex, Meghan Markle, for her family, and reduce it to some tabloid, talking head nonsense. You people have no class, no education. You are truly a disappointment. Hello and welcome. This is Majesty Sussex Report. I am Antonio and it's my pleasure to have you here. And thank you for taking some of your time to spend it with us. I really do appreciate that. If you are a regular subscriber, you, you, you're here, please put your notification on so you know when I'm going to use the word drop when I drop an episode. <laughs> um, so do make sure your not notifications are on. If you are new, give us a chance. If you find our content, uh, kind of, sort of, but, you know, you don't hate it, um, subscribe. But before you do that, though, I hope you know that we are a channel that is here to fully support the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Prince Harry and Meghan. If you don't like them and you have a, a whatever feeling about them that you know may not go away, then listen. Ta ta, goodbye. Thank you. Bye bye. Everyone else, look, leave me a comment. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read them because I read them all. And um, let's, let's, let's continue building positivity around this community and around Megan, Harry and everyone else in their um, in in their in, the, in their circle. I want to say Nigeria. Nigeria. Let me see it again. Nigeria. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. As Maya Angelou says, is what you say to God. So I say thank you. These past couple of days, I've been in a... I, I can't describe it. it I, I've been in a sort of... <laughs> like, like almost like floating in space, maybe. I don't know what that feels like, but I'm guessing it might feel like the way I've, I've been feeling. And at the same time, kind of paranoid, worried, because I am a person who worries about everything. But the way you've rolled out and the way you received and the way you treated and you welcomed your daughter home. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, shoot. Um, oh, <clears throat> It was just absolutely spectacular. And I am so proud. Squaddies, <laughs> Sussex Squad, all of you people who traveled, people, well, the ladies, man, the ladies, who, you know, did all this stuff, showed up, and by the way, looking fantastic, all of you. And showing Megan that 
that love. I'll be honest, it brought me to tears a couple of times. Because <laughs> people who've been here for a while with me, you know, I, I get, I don't let my, I don't, look, listen, I'm not one of those guys who's like, oh no, I don't have feelings. I don't cry. What is that? No, I'm human. I'm fully human from, from, from head to toe, human. And as, as such, I have all ranges of emotions. And when they show up, they show up, man. You know, let, let it be. And I was just so moved by all of you. And, um, oh man, why is this, this is stuff today? I think that, that intro just kind of, kind of gets me, right? Because it's, it's hard, man. It's, it's, it gets so frustrating because you keep, I don't remember a day in my existence that I haven't been. Okay, so I had to edit out all of that, that followed that, um, yeah, anyways, I had to edit it out. When, when I realized that actually kings showed up to, I'm going to use the word anoint, and if it's the wrong word, I, I do ask for your forgiveness, but it hit me, like really hit me, like, like when I saw the clip and Megan's face and she looked at Prince Harry and they had a, mm, damn, Whew. they had a moment. And let me, let me just say this again, like the power of love, the power of true love, of love, Love that is anointed. Mm. Because what I saw in her face was I can't talk. <laughs> okay, you know what? Um, sorry folks, I'm gonna take a few minutes and for, for you it will just be like a, a couple of seconds, but I'm gonna take a few minutes. Let me just Okay, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully I can keep it together. Okay, hopefully, I, 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 I can't promise anything, but hopefully I can. I don't even remember what I was saying anymore, um, but I am just very moved by everything and very proud. And I think when you are searching, listen, I am, I, I, I am part of this community and part of this group because a biracial woman married into the British royal family. And I am of multiple races, cultures that are part of my DNA, part of my history. My ancestry and ancestors come from four continents. So I rejoiced, not only because there was representation coming into that family, but there was someone who, as many of us have said, looks like a member of our family in the Commonwealth. And then to see the way in which she was treated mistreated, abused to the point that she didn't want to exist anymore. I couldn't fathom or even comprehend that they were doing this nonsense. And right out in the open, just ill-treating, abusing this woman right out there in the open. And then the worst was when people within our own community 
started using those tropes. Oh, she's not black enough. Oh, she's light skin. Oh, well, she's not really one of us. Oh, well, now she knows that she's black. You know, using all of these kind of colonizer mentality that has kept us from seeing each other as brothers and sisters, seeing each other as as uh, people who can bring and enrich us and elevate us. No, some of us prefer to stay in the gutter with mentality and 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 that idiotic some kind of justification as to why you need to hate your own sister, your own brother. Because society and whichever one you live in, whichever you are, tells us that you have one drop of black in you and you black. You might be light skinned black, you might be pale skinned black, but you black. <clears throat> because I'll tell you one thing, the racist have never had a problem calling me names. Never. Never. They've never stopped me and go, hmm, I don't know. You look a, I'm not sure which one are you. They're quick to use that N word. Quick. So they, they've never had a problem. So I don't know what our problem is. That we need to, you know, divide and be weak rather than unite and be stronger. So part of my emotion, I think, is because I know what it feels like. And I'm not, I'm not saying Megan feels this way or felt that way. But I know what it feels like to be in that intersectionality of of um, culture and 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 heritage and you're standing there like you are some abandoned child waiting for someone to come and say you belong with us you are one of us and you wait and you wait and you wait and you wait so I kept thinking you know, because all these things have been thrown at her, not only from her own community, but also the abuse that she's received from, 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 from her own relatives, her father, an entire media machinery of an entire country, and some international, every day telling her she's nothing every single day inventing lies about this woman. Every day. A day does not pass where somewhere they don't publish an article or there's a TV show. In Australia, they, they, they had this show where, where, where they talked, I think maybe five minutes or less, about the hatred of Meghan Markle. And when you have TV presenters, journalists, just there and they're saying how much they hate this person and people just sit around and laugh. When you have a member of parliament in Australia declaring how much she hates Meghan Markle. I, I'm like, what, what the, what the madness? So the emotion comes from when a people rise up and they claim you and they say, you're one of us. You're one of us. And not only you're one of us, you are a princess. Oh. I saw her face and I thought, oh man, gee. I thought, uh, girl, you home. Let your people, let your ancestors cover you with love.
I give you strength. I saw it in her face. And I rejoice. I rejoice. So I say thank you. I say thank you. Thank you. clear. This right here is exactly why the British royal family, British media, and the British public hate Meghan Markle. It's not about who she is, it's about who she represents. It's about who she allows to feel seen. The British royal family exists for one reason and one reason only, and that is to uphold white supremacy. It's so when you think of kings and queens and royals and rulers of the world, this is what you see. Pale, stale, male, sausage finger fool who can't even unite his own family, but is somehow supposed to unite an entire nation and an entire commonwealth. Okay. See, when this went down, this is when the panic really set in. They really started to see what was happening here. So while we, people of the world with good sense, saw Meghan as an asset to the royal family, they actually saw her as a threat because you see, the people she's surrounded by, yeah, they're meant to be ruled by the monarchy, not represented by it. You see this right here? This is way too much for British people to handle. They do not want to see Nigerians or black people of any kind being treated with respect as equals, being honored and deferred to by their royals, people that they bow down to. And you're treating black people as equals? Oh, no, 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 no. You may be saying to yourself, Megan isn't even really black. She's only half black. She's light, bright, and damn near white. That's your own ignorance because Megan has never hidden who she is. She has never shied away from it, never tried to hide it, never once denied it, and even doubled down every chance she could. She might not be black enough for you, but she certainly wasn't white enough for them. <laughs> Part of Meg, this 43% that may have preempted you that she's Nigerian before now. Has any of her actions displayed besides the main thing to say, ah, this is a black, this is a Nigerian action? I feel like <laughs> she's going to add to the negative list that we already have in Nigeria. For example, do you say Duchess of, what is it called? Duchess of Sussex. Sussex. Sussex, yeah. 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 And uh, she, she, she's been branded different names. And then she's going to add to the list of we are, we are, we are, we are known to be uh, uh, terrorists, 419, whatever. <laughs> and now she's come to join the list of that. Uh, you know, Brazilian Megan, that they call her. She, she comes in with a, with a diva attitude mm -hmm. and all the rest. No, I don't, I'm not... Proud. You're not but, proud. But rather, I'm more, I'm more curious as to why she chose to be a Nigerian. You know, I, I like her for who she is, but she hasn't added value to Nigeria as a country. You know, I, I'm actually, I'm more interested in what this DNA you? thing that they said they did, that she's 43%. I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't trust it unless I am convinced. <laughs> I was really shocked. I was like, you know, why Nigerian? You know, mm -hmm. out of all uh, states or country, she chose Nigeria. Nigeria. And how far is that true that she is actually in Nigeria? 40, 40, what percent? 43 percent. 43 percent. I don't understand. You, you know, you want to see the proof? You yes, <laughs> definitely. Okay. Our actions tells me she's not a Nigerian. For example, if a Nigerian girl but lucky enough or whatever, marry into the royal family, I think she would know what to do. I think she would have respected her in-laws because that's the way we were cultured. We have aunties, uncle, we have extended family. She would have respected her extended family. And before you know, a Nigerian woman would have earned the, the queen's love and respect that she would start cooking jollof rice within the royal families. And I believe the queen would have been. This panel discussion uh, whatever it was, I'm not sure, raises several critical points about identity, cultural expectations, and the biases that can emerge when assessing someone's actions through the lens of heritage discovered through DNA testing. Given the roles of the panelist as educator, marriage counselor, and social worker, it's important to address these issues with sensitivity and insight 
particularly because of their influential positions within the community. Inaccuracies and biases. Heritage versus cultural identity. One significant inaccuracy in the conversation is the conflation of genetic heritage with cultural identity. Being 43% Nigerian by DNA does not automatically imbue a person with the cultural practices, traditions, or values of Nigeria. Culture is learned through lived experience and socialization within a community, not through genetic markers. Unrealistic expectations. The expectations placed on Meghan Markle to adopt Nigerian behaviors, like certain types of food to cook with the royal family, or behaving according to the panelist's view of Nigerian cultural norms, are unrealistic and unfair. Such expectations ignores the fact that she was raised in a different cultural context and would not have had the same cultural inputs as someone raised in Nigeria. <laughs> cultural essentialism. The discussion veers into cultural essentialism by suggesting that there is a monolithic um, Nigerian way to behave, particularly in marital or, or, or in the family context. This ignores the diversity of experiences and behaviors among Nigerians themselves who are influenced by numerous factors, including personal beliefs, education, and individual circumstances. Bias against personal agency. The critique of Megan for allegedly not conforming to certain family or cultural expectations also highlights a bias against personal agency. The implication that she should suppress her individuality to conform to traditional roles reflect a broader societal issue where women are often expected to uphold family honor or, or cultural values at the expense of their autonomy. The idea of evaluating Megan's behavior as Nigerian <laughs> or not based on a DNA test is indeed ludicrous. What they're basically doing is oversimplifying complex identities. It reduces the complex mosaic of human identity to simplistic and often stereotypical behaviors expected from a particular genetic background. It ignores personal history and context. Megan's upbringing and, and, and her experiences and personal choices right, shape her identity far more than her DNA test results. This is the false belief that DNA is the predominant factor determining human behavior and cultural affiliation, which is a deeply flawed and scientifically unsupported view. Now, let me say this. Look, understanding one's heritage can be enriching and profound. It should not be used to box individuals into narrow categories or expectations. Each person's identity is a product of many factors, including, but not limited to, their genetic makeup. The conversation around Meghan Markle's identity and her actions should focus more 
on her individual experiences, choices, and the personal meanings she derives from her heritage. Rather than imposing external expectations based on a DNA test? Furthermore, as... <laughs> I can't. As influencers in the community, the panelists should advocate for a more nuanced understanding of identity that respects personal agency and the context interplay of factors that contribute to each person's sense of self. Can you just imagine an educator, a social worker, and a marriage counselor would you let them give you advice based on that, that they just said? They're spewing out information, making assumptions on a DNA test that has nothing to do with how a person was raised, where they were raised, or any sort of cultural norms. Ladies, come on. Nigerian women are a lot more intelligent than that. Keep up. With all due respect. Hi, my beautiful people. Um, this was a long one, and um, I, I feel it. I feel, I feel, I feel heavy, and it feels heavy. I think uh, this, this look. The only reason why I decided to do the the this this panel thing was because it's all over um, Twitter, and I thought. Everything they're saying is so easy to just dispel. Like, like, like it. They they are talking about a person's DNA and attributing cultural norms to their DNA makes zero sense, right? They're talking as if you automatically, because you have a certain DNA you automatically have attributes of behavior. It's, it's, it's exactly like, you know, let's say you discover tomorrow that uh, you are 15 or 20% um, Chinese. Now you've never gone to China. You don't, you don't have any, you know, any relation really to the country or the people, for example. Are you expected then from that point to like there should be signs that you 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 have Chinese heritage? Like the whole premise in which they have based the question and all of this is ludicrous. So it brings me to this point. Who's behind it? So who's behind this? Why are they doing it? What's the purpose of it? Why now? And who do they represent? Because I'll, I'll, I'll be, again, very frank here, very honest, transparent. I would not hire one of them. I wouldn't. And if I saw this and I had a, a, a child, let's say, who was meeting with the 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 the, the, count, the social the the um social worker or 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 the educator? I I I would I would pull my child. I'd be like, no no no, you will not be talking to my to my child. And if my relationship was in any trouble, oh, but Jesus, I'm not going to. No no mm -mm. no. So because. I mean, based on what she said, she would advocate for you to stay in an abusive relationship, right? Because those are the norms. Kind of scary, eh? So, the questions now, for me, and which I want you to think about, is, is who's behind it? And why? And why would these women 
sit there and sort of answer these questions that were completely nonsensical based on the point of reference. You're literally answering questions on a DNA. On DNA, that's it. Hui. Well, it's over an hour. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> yes, I got emotional here, there, and everywhere. My own personal issues. Um, yeah, it sort of hit me. It really hit me hard. Um, seeing how, you know, I really felt. I really felt, you know, everything she's, she's, these people have put her through. That institution. These crazy media people. And to this hour, they're still saying nonsense. Like one interview, one commentator or whatever on, on, on UK um, television was saying that she is now offended. Offended and upset that Megan did not exit the airport, did not exit Heathrow to come and, and maybe wave or like hang out with Harry. It, it would have been so nice if she did that. Why would she? Does she have security? They took their security away. Do you not know like, like their lives are in constant danger? Okay, I better stop because I, I have a feeling this is going to turn into another half an hour conversation. So anyways, like, like it's, it's, it's nonstop, right? Okay, I need to just stop because I feel tired. I feel exhausted. And um, I love you folks. Take care. Um, big hugs. Take care of yourselves. And um, I'm going to try and let tomorrow be a little more fun, I think. Yeah. I'll do something fun for tomorrow. Okay. Mwah! Besos grandes. I feel like a little el zorro. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Until we speak again.